Hey everyone and good morning. It is Monday morning. What is today's date? It is March 21st. Looks like it's just a little bit before 9 a.m. on Monday, March 21st. I had a guy contact me last week. said, hey, I, I really want to buy a uh, SL70 project. It can be rough. He says, I'm just going to mod it. I don't really care. Do you have any SL70s that you would be willing to part with? And so I sent him some pictures, had these couple different bikes. This one doesn't have any kind of engine with it, but it was a little bit more complete. That one has a box with the original engine in it, but it's all disassembled in pieces and the bike is rough. And so we made arrangements. He was going to show up yesterday on Sunday and he didn't show. <laughs> typical, right? It happens sometimes. I, I shouldn't say typical. I don't, I don't mean to be... I get a lot of buyers that actually do show up. So uh, I should have, just from the conversation, I, I should have known. But anyway, the long that, that's water under the bridge. But I've got these two bikes pulled out, and I thought, you know what, we, we just finished up a project. We're ready to start another one. And so I think we're going to take this SL70 uh, that has the yellow tank on it, and we're going to put it up on the work table. And we'll probably throw a, since I don't have any kind of engine for it, we've got boxes down here with Lifen 125s, manuals. So we're gonna roll that dude up here and we're gonna take it apart. And let's go ahead and build an SL70. Before we tear it apart, let's do a little bit of a walk around. Now, this particular bike, I actually built once before, probably 15 years ago. And when I say built, I mean, I just got it up and running and I used it just to ride around my shop and, and so forth. I didn't do any kind of aesthetic cleanup to it or anything like that. So it uh, had a, a, a life and engine in it one time before, and I took that out and put it in a different project. Um, but at one point I had this up as a running riding bike. You can tell I there's been an aftermarket wiring harness that was put in it. And I believe this is one of the really, really old school, um, the original harnesses I used to use, those that came from Web LLC off of the um, off of eBay, no longer in business. Don is retired, uh, and that's why we've gone to the Trail Buddy harnesses. But for years, I used this harness that I bought off of Don. Um, this bike's got a huge knobby on the front that we'll probably have to try and take off. Uh, if I remember right, it was a pretty rough riding bike because of that. Uh, unfortunately, these bikes use a 16, and my, I'm going from memory here. I think this is a 16 inch tire on the front. I can't see it and it's from in the shadow over here. And I think it's a 16 inch rim on the front and a 14 inch rim on the back. So it could probably use I wish that tire would fit back here, but it won't. So, seat's a little rough. Tank's got a couple little dents in it, but we're not gonna worry about all that. Obviously, the steering, the fork has come back and hit it. Is, it, is the steering stop broke? No, it's not broke. I don't know why, how it would have come back and hit that. Huh, anyway. But it's got a decent set of handlebars on it. It's actually got the original taillight bracket, which is probably worth more than the entire bike. Somebody has put, no, I didn't do this, somebody's put uh, just a little strapping to hold the fender on. I think I've got one of the, the uh, original style brackets to hold that. But it's got the brake pedal and all the brake components. I believe the front has the same. Yeah, and it's got, got an original front fender. Doesn't have a headlight, but we've got over there, we've got headlights over there. We throw a headlight on it. So I'm gonna go to work uh, and start tearing this down 
and I'm probably not going to film that. Just get it all disassembled, get this old wiring harness off of it, um, tires off of it, tank, fenders, all that kind of good stuff, and uh, we'll kind of assess what we've got and then start building it back up. You know, sometimes my mouth speaks faster than my brain thinks. I talked about the steering stop being broke because of the dents in the, uh, the tank. Well, silly me, that's not the original tank to this bike. Obviously, it was an Aquarius blue bike, and that's a summer yellow tank. So the dents from that tank didn't happen on this bike. So uh, sorry for misspeaking there, saying something that completely was stupid. So... Uh, but anyway, yeah, I know it looks like the steering stops in pretty good shape. All right, so it's now about 10, 15, 10, 16. So we've spent a little over an hour uh, tearing it down, picking up our tools, getting everything kind of laid out. Let's just kind of walk around and, and look at the, uh, the parts and talk about what we're going to use and what we're not going to use and what we're kind of what the game plan is. Uh, obviously, frame and swing arm and those sorts of things will all get repainted silver um, with the VHT, uh, actually, what is it, universal aluminum paint that I use for like the rims and so forth on a CT70. I don't have either blue or yellow paint that matches either one of these very closely. I do have red, so I think... I'm, we're going to go ahead and change the color to, to red. Um, yeah, there's nothing in the VIN that actually tells you what color it's supposed to be. I usually hate to change colors. I like to keep them stock, but since we don't have all the stock pieces here anyway, um, so we're, we're going to change it to red just because that's what I have. I think I've got a better seat than that one. Yeah, right here. I've got, a, I've got a better seat, so we'll go with a seat. Uh, I think I've got some side cases. Yeah, it's going to need to be, going to need to have some repair work. Uh, this one, I think, looks in pretty decent shape. Yeah, that's uh, probably off an XL70, isn't it? But uh, they're the same, so we'll clean those up and paint those when we paint all the other tins. Gonna try and bring back the chrome as best as I can, but we may have to paint some of the chrome stuff, go with like just a black or something. Uh, you know, I'm not sure how well I'll get some of that stuff to come back. We'll see, we'll play with it. I, this is not a restore. Um, if you're new to the channel, I do not restore bikes. And when I say, when I use the word restore, to me, a when you restore a bike, you are putting it back to the way Honda shipped it out of their factory. Um, if you alter it in any way, shape, or form, you've rebuilt it. You've not restored it. Uh, so anyway, that's just my take on that term. But uh, so we're just going to rebuild it. So everything's not going to be a hundred percent original. Hundred percent. Obviously, we're going with a uh, an aftermarket engine. So right there, that tells you that we're not sticking to too many rules. I'll try and clean up the cables. Uh, it had all the had the front brake cable and uh, had a throttle cable and a clutch cable. So we'll we'll probably cover all these and just make them black. So got my work cut out for me. So let me start cleaning up some parts and uh, getting some paint put on some of the stuff. So when you see it next, we will start assembling it. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little end of the day, day one uh, wrap up, kind of finish up. Uh, I did not get as much done as I had hoped to today. I had a neighbor stop by that had a little welding and fabrication job, and that took a few hours during the late afternoon or late morning, early afternoon. So it kind of slowed me down a little bit. It is currently 318 on Monday, March 21st. And you can see a few things I did get to, some parts I got cleaned up, painted, uh, dirt knocked off of them, so forth. I've got dust shields ordered for the front forks, so that will be a few days down the road. Um, the taillight bracket 
it cleaned up somewhat okay. There's You can see right there. And then I just spray painted the back that was really super rusty. So we'll see what it looks like when we get it on the bike. If it doesn't look that great, we may go ahead and spray paint the rest of it. Um, cables, like I think I mentioned earlier, the clutch and the uh, throttle cable were black. So I took the front brake cable, which I believe is actually a CT70 front brake cable that has the, the switch in line, but I put uh, black shrink wrap on it, a shrink tube, and to make it black also. I did find on that old red parts bike over there, it had the perches for both sides that we needed, and then I had new levers. So we've got those cleaned up and, and just kind of sitting on the handlebars. Uh, wiring harness, the throttle, new headlight from TV parts, battery box. We probably won't run a battery, but we'll put a battery box in it. The front headlight ears. And it's just some miscellaneous hardware that I've got cleaned up. Haven't got to the rims and tires yet. Uh, the pegs, the exhaust brake pedal and any of the tins or the uh, the side cases I haven't fixed that yet so all that will be another day I've got the uh, frame sitting in that tub uh, with some uh, solution in the bottom trying to knock out some of the grease that's on the bottom of that frame so I can clean it up and get it painted but we're making progress so I won't be able to come back tomorrow. I'm uh, got something I got going on tomorrow, which is Tuesday. So hopefully maybe on Wednesday, I'll pick this video up and we'll continue to work on this thing. All right, we are a couple days down the road now and I'm back in the shop. And I wanna take a look at these side cases. Uh, both of them are broken. This one has a crack right here and then a crack right at this pin that I want to try and fix. And then this one actually has a whole piece that is broken out of it. Now someone, I don't know if that's Bondo that they tried to use. I'm not sure what that looks like Bondo, but I'm not really sure what it is. I'm going to try this Gorilla, Gorilla Glue Epoxy sets in five minutes clear. And I'm actually going to cut some um, drywall fiber tape type stuff and use it like as a mesh and hopefully, you know, maybe get it to hold a little better. Uh, have I ever done this? Nope. <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Uh, but I'm just thinking, you know, rather than just slather stuff on there like they did here maybe if it had some kind of material to help bond it I, I don't know I'm, I'm... and this stuff have if you've never seen this this has got like adhesive it's kind of sticky on one side kind of a tough spot right here because it's around it's around where that pin is get that over far enough and put another piece on there yeah I like it a little better I can go back and trim off some of this stuff with a razor blade I won't I'm not gonna cover the whole thing but all right I'm gonna do the same thing on this piece here, kind of hold it in place and get this mixed up 
And when I get this all mixed up and ready to put it on there, then I'll, I'll bring you guys back. But you don't need to sit and, sit and watch me do that. That curve right there makes it a little more difficult. Of course, I'm just using a nail to spread it. <laughs> I probably should have got something a little bit better than just an old bent nail to Too much on there, then I'll just have to sand it back off. Okay, we're gonna see what that does. It says it's supposed to set up in about five minutes, so I'll bring you back in about five minutes. All right, on this one, I started by putting some on the seam putting some of the adhesive on the seam. Oh, I lost the end of my fiber tape here. Where the hell did the end of it go? That's the worst part about this stuff. I cut it off and now I can't find the end. Ain't that a kick in the pants? Where the hell's it at? There it is. Uh-oh, I got stuff running out onto my workbench. That ain't good. Okay. I'm in camera enough for you guys to see. Stay in place. Stay in place. All right. We're going to let that. It's probably going to take more than five minutes because I did it so thick. I don't think you're supposed to do it that thick, but. All right, I need to uh, clean up my mess here. And... That's gonna make my workbench sticky. All right, I'll bring you back in a few minutes. So while those side cases are kind of chilling and doing their thing, letting that stuff dry, I think we'll take a look at this front tire I did go through my stash and found a smaller 16 inch uh, tire that will fit this rim. Uh, I do not have an extra tube, so we're going to have to check out this tube and see if it's the tires flat. So it obviously has something going on. 
Plus, we will probably poke a hole in it since I don't have tire irons. And I'm going to use screwdrivers. I'm probably going to screw it up here. Not a sharp enough screwdriver. <laughs> if I pull that one out, am I going to lose that? No, not too bad. There, she's starting to go. I can get the tube out of it now before I do any more damage to it. Actually, the tube acts like it's holding air, maybe. It just was low. So let's see if we can. I'm going to back up and punt. I'm going to take the uh, take the valve stem, take the Schrader valve thing out of it here. So maybe let more air out of it so I can get it out. It's got air in it. So maybe we might get lucky and actually have a good tube. looking if the camera's not in view i apologize there it popped out so what i was taking out was the little valve oh yeah tube actually definitely had air in it tube There we go. All right. So before we throw that on there, this was a three by 16. This one is a two fifty by 16. 
So, but before I put that on there, I'm gonna take uh, just a minute and just kind of try and get the dirt and grime and clean the rim up a little bit before I put the tire and the tube on it, and then we'll hopefully see that see if it holds air. So, be back in a minute. All right. So I'm not trying to build a show bike. So I I wiped some of the dirt and the grime and stuff off of it, but I didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time and obviously the tires let's see I don't think that's got a directional I should be paying attention to that no I don't see any kind of directional arrow I don't think it really matters which way it goes on are one thing I am not very good at. I'm sure there's easier ways, more efficient ways to do these, but not something I spend a lot. I'm so used to CT70s that you can take the, you know, the rim halves apart. Come on, get down there. There. All right. That somewhere there's a hole where the valve stem. There it is. All right, sorry about that. I had a visitor walk in. And here's where we poke a hole in the tube.
I'm gonna go put air in it and see what happens. Well, awesome. It seems to be holding air. I guess the real test is, is when we come back tomorrow, if it still has air in it. So, but that will give us a much better ride than that great big old knobby on the front. So I need to hit this with some armor all or something and clean the rubber up. Uh, I do want to look at most, most SL seventies do not have a speedometer or the K zeros don't anyway, the later models came with one, but I find it curious that even though it doesn't have a speedometer, there is a speedometer gear in there, but I don't know if I can get it out or not. The little tabs that are supposed to fit into these slots are so flattened out, it may be stuck in there. I'm not really sure, but if we're gonna see if we can get it out, straighten maybe the tabs without, we might break them, they're so bent over so far. What happens is somebody that doesn't know how that works they don't put the speedometer gear in the tabs and then put this on. They just have that the speedometer gear in there. They put all this on there. The tabs don't line up. They crank up the axle bolt and just flatten the tabs. Well, on a bike, you know, this bike doesn't have a speedometer, so it's not a big deal. They don't know any different. But just in case we find a speedometer to put on it, what I'm talking about, let me find a uh, pointer here. What I'm talking about is that little tab right there and that one right over there. And they are so flattened out that they're underneath the seal. And I may have to try and get them, straighten them a little bit to even get them out. They're so bent that I'm afraid when we go to straighten them, we're gonna break them off. Almost. There it is. Clean it up here a little bit so you guys can. Now, I've got other videos on this, but while well, I got you here, we might as well talk about it. I don't know, we might make it. They're still a little bit splayed out. Now, see they won't they won't quite won't quite go. Got the one on the left in the slot and see how that one doesn't, it's it's too bent out. Now what I do is not real rocket science. Just gotta be careful. Looks like that one on the left is bent more to me so I'm gonna put it down. Oh, we're close. There we go. And see that locks it in. And so then now that spins with the, with the hub and then turns the little worm gear that's inside there. And you can tell if it's working or not. Hang on a second, I'm gonna wipe my hands off before I grab my camera.
by looking in the hole here and as you turn that uh, how can I do this so that you guys can see it see it turning as I turn the wheel and what I'm looking I'm looking inside this little hole right here you see that little spade piece in there see it spinning so now our speedometer gear is working so if we find a speedometer to put on this bike we should be able to hook a cable to that and get a speedometer to work so all right let's move on to something else i guess since we looked at the front tire we might as well look at the back one uh this has a three by 14 rear tire it's you know worn but i think it'll be all right it's not slick so for the low buck project we're building it'll be fine uh looks like it's got a 38 tooth rear sprocket and it has the same um rubber dampener isolator setup thing whatever you want to call that that a ct70 has uh take the snap ring off and then you can pull the sprocket off and it's got the four pins and they they sit inside the little rubber dampeners that are inside the hub so uh, we're going to leave that set up on here that should work just fine um I think what I'm going to do is take it over in the other room where the air compressor's at. And I think the first thing we're going to do is air it up and see if it acts like it holds any air. I did find a uh, another 14-inch tube when I was looking for used tires. So if we have to, if the rim, if this tube is no good, we hopefully have another tube that maybe we can put in it. But we're going to air it up and maybe let it sit for a day and uh, see if it holds air, you know, see if we hear anything. And, while that's happening, maybe we'll take it apart and clean it up a little bit. So I think first thing I'll do is go put some air in it though. So I put air in it and it seems to be holding. Uh, I don't hear any like huge escape of air. So maybe it's gonna be good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the sprocket off. So you take that snap ring off. This just lifts off of there. There are the rubber dampeners that are inside. These all look to be in decent shape, so we're going to leave them in there. I wanted to take, it's got this little dust shield. So I'm going to go clean that up, get some of the you know grease and grime off of it. And then it looks like someone's painted this sprocket. I may hit that with a wire wheel and see if we can't get that paint off and then start cleaning the rest of this up. So much better looking. Got the brake plate kind of cleaned up. All right, super stoked. We got, uh, it seems to be holding air. I had it in the tub of water over there. I did not see any air bubbles. So if it's got a leak, it's a really, really slow one. So we have to air it up a little bit when we want to ride this bike that's not a big deal so good so now we've got front and rear tire assemblies ready to go so i still haven't painted the frame but uh we're going to put this bike together sometime in the next few days so all right let's move on to the next thing all right guys we're on to the next day and I think this is going to work. I think it's uh, I think it's going to hold up enough for us to do what we want to do. Pretty pleased with that. I've got a little bit more prep work that I need to do before I paint them. But I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the other thing I want to share with you, let's check the tires. And they still have air in them. So, pumped about that. So, I think we've got couple good rims and tires so 
I'm gonna work on these a little bit longer and then throw, see if we can throw some paint on them. Well, as you can see, I finally got the frame cleaned up, got it painted, uh, went ahead and put the swing arm on, just stuck the bolt through it, haven't bolted it. Uh, I'm still waiting on the dust seals or the dust caps for the front fork, so I, I can't put the forks on yet. But I think I'll start going through and maybe unbox the engine, see if I can get the engine in the frame and do some things uh, while I am waiting on parts like those forks. Uh, I went ahead and ordered a new exhaust from uh, Dr. ATV or uh, Beatrice Cycle. Um, so I've got that coming. But uh, I'm going to take a few minutes. Uh, I've got the parts all laying over here now. and We'll see what we can bolt on, make it look more like a bike. Well, it's coming together little by little. I've got the engine put into it. Now, if you've never put a, it doesn't matter if it's an aftermarket. Uh, I think the aftermarket engines are a little harder because the head is a little, it's a little longer because of the longer stroke. And I think you got more fins and so forth on there. Uh, it's a little more difficult than a stock uh, SL70 engine, I think. Um, but to get these engines in, you take off this little bracket right here, and then I take off the stator cover, um, the the cover here that holds the cam in, and the cam cover from the other side. I take that off. I also take the sprocket off, and that allows you to put it in there. Now, if you hear a drip, I've got a uh, see that bucket over there on the left side. My roof has developed a leak and I've got a couple buckets over there and it's raining outside. So if you hear a drip, I apologize. But uh, when you go to put one of these in here, you basically have to turn the engine up and kind of kind of have it sideways. Uh, let's see, how did I how did I do it? I think I had it turned this direction with the head and kind of going in here and kind of turn it and twist it and let it slide all in there. Uh, it's tricky. Tape up, if you're you know worried about paint at all, put more than one layer of tape because you will you will burn through the first, you'll, you'll touch the first layer and scratch through it. So hopefully uh, if you put two or three layers on that will keep you from getting into the paint. But, uh, but anyway, that's what, and I take the plug out too. I don't think I mentioned that, the spark plug, so. Stator cover, cam cover, uh, the cam holder here that keeps the cam from coming out. Um, this piece off the side, take that off. Sprocket, spark plug, anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all buttoned back up. All right, fellas, I'm back at it again today on this SL70 and I got the uh, dust seals for the forks. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and put those uh, put the forks back up in it and to know how far up I need to go I think I'm going to put this the top clamp on here first that'll let me know how far the forks need to come up um, when I was cleaning up parts uh, well focus this top this nut is machined out of a solid piece of aluminum I've never seen one like that I don't I don't work on many SL70s, and I don't know if that's a standard um, practice for an SL70, but it's not the 29 millimeter that like a CT70 is either. It's, it's smaller, but I've never seen one that was a piece of aluminum that had been machined out. Typically it's a, you know, steel and it's been chromed. All right, that'll give us some kind of idea how far up we need to bring those. Now, there is a left and a right fork. The right, or I'm sorry, the left one needs the brake stay to hold the um, to hold the the brake plate from spinning. This one doesn't have that, so this one goes on the right side. think to take the bolt out. Give me just a second here. OK. 
Okay, that will keep it from falling back out of there. Let's grab the other one, see if it see if it slides up in there that easy. Boy, that one went easy. I've had some of them in the past. I've I've had to fight. I even uh, at one point made a uh, like a slide hammer to pull to pull them up in there. And I've tried everything. You know, I've tried uh, widening this gap right here. Uh, you know, putting a bolt with a piece of steel back there so it pushes it open. I've never had really good luck with any of that. But this one, oh, this one's going nice. Not fighting this at all. Damn it. You got, you didn't tell me, did you? Somebody out there was going, hey, you're forgetting something. The headlight ears. Oh, and I've got it all off balance now. Forks threw it off balance. All right, I'm going to uh, reach right here and shut the camera off. And i got to go find the uh, the headlight ears because i got to put those on before I can finish putting those forks on. Uh, okay, dummy me. You know what? I can take that top clamp back off, can't I? And slide them on there. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so by the number of times I've uh, misspoken on something on this bike or did something in the wrong order, it's obvious I don't work on SL70s very often. Um, so I'm getting ready to put the ears to hold the headlight bucket to, on there. And the ears aren't concentric. You can see that this is a little different angle than this one. And I wasn't sure if it went if it went like that, or if it goes, you know, like with the headlight pointing out this way, or the. So I went back in my inventory, and I've got a stock, what I believe is a mostly stock, SL70 original, um, hasn't been too molested, and the way these are on it. They go, the angled piece, the one that seems to be a little bit more of an angle goes to the top. So as the, the forks lay back, then that puts that more at a level line. So that's the way we're gonna put them on there. If it's incorrect, somebody goes, hey, that's not right. Well, we're just gonna go with it. Yeah, I definitely don't know these bikes as well as I do CT70s, and it kind of shows. Hmm, if I take that off of there, is that port just going to... There we go. Alright, so I believe that one goes on that fork. to bring those up, button those up, put the bolts in here that actually squeeze the bottom clamp onto the fork and get all that buttoned up and get it snugged up good. I guess while we're up there, we might as well put the handlebars on it.
Nope, not enough bit. All right, there we go. I'll tighten that down the rest of the way. Actually, I won't really tighten it because I don't know what rake I want yet on them. So it's starting to look like something. It's not looking too bad. So I think maybe I will... I don't have the tins painted yet, but I really like to get it up on its tires so that I can put the brake pedal and you know the foot pegs and do some of those things back. So, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the tires on it just to get it off of this stand and uh, and work on some of the stuff here underneath. We, if we have to pull the uh, tires back off to put the put the fenders on then so be it but uh, yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do I think i'll get the tires out i haven't checked them for air today yep we are still got air so that's good so all right let me get set up and put the tires on it all right so i got the back one on let's see how hard it's gonna be to put this front one on here Sorry, should have had the axle bolt out of it already. Let's see, probably want to leave that spacer in there. Get my greasy hands all over it. All right, we're gonna have to come down and we've gotta get the uh, The brake stay to line up. Did I get the brake plate? Where does it go? Hang on a second. I'm gonna have to look at my back for a second here. Okay. Oh, I hear a car door. I think I got got a visitor. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Let's see if we can't keep going with what we were doing. Come on, get everything lined up. Yep, fall out. I think I might be too low now. Come back up just a little bit. There we go. There we go. What did I do over here? Awesome. All right. I'm going to... Uh, Put the nut on that, take the stand out from underneath it, roll it up here into the wheel chalk, and we will tackle something else. I think I'll go to like, I wanna put the brake pedal and do some of those things. I believe the brake pedal was supposed to be chrome, but this one was so rusty, I could not, I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned, and it just looked brown. So I, uh, I opted just to paint it a flat black. Now, what, the way this works, it fits up in here. I was a little worried there for a second that I couldn't get it in and out. With the, I thought I was gonna take the engine back out. That would have been a bummer. Uh, and then it's got this bolt that runs through here that threads into that hole. And we'll try and do all this without scratching up. But what I've got to figure out is the orientation of that spring. Okay, I think it, 
I think I see. I think the, I think the big loop catches the bottom of the brake pedal, and this little loop catches this piece of the tube right here of the frame. Hmm, that might be a trick to put that together. Yes, sir. Oh, well, there we go. All right. I think that spring goes over top of the brake pad. Threading that, am I? Hard to tell with that uh, impact. Hang on a second, I'm gonna get a ratchet. So I, we definitely don't want to cross thread it. No, I don't think we were. I think I can tighten it tight because. There's a sleeve inside the uh, the brake pedal that wrote, that the pedal itself actually spins on, kind of like a bearing. Got it. All right. Okay. Sorry, I'm thinking. Th you know, uh, trying to think through of the order I want to put things on and what I've got to pull back off. So there's no sense putting the brake rod if we're gonna to have to take the back tire off to put the fender on. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna put that brake rod on there. I'm waiting on uh, new rubber for the foot pegs. This one's not bad. I think it's actually, that's the one for the other side. This one, I'm, I'm missing the rubber off of it. So I've ordered um, some more foot peg rubber. Plus I need to clean these up before I put them on there. But uh, like I say, I guess I could have put them on there because we know the rubber just slides over it, but I need to clean them up before we install them. So you know what? I got a feeling this video is getting kind of long. So uh, I'm gonna stop and take a look at the video. And if it stops right here, then you know I felt like it was long enough, and we'll do a second video. If uh, if it continues, then you'll see see the bike continue to progress from here. But uh, I think we're going to stop it right here and, and call this video number one. So thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you in a few days with the other video.